Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Malfunction. Thank you for joining me. Some very, very big news coming out of um, the US and especially with international card funding sites, Kickstarter and Patreon. Now, um, if you haven't already heard, uh, Kickstarter plans to lay off 35% of its, uh, sorry, uh, plans, sorry, Kickstarter plans layoffs after new projects on the site drop off by 35,000, uh, 35%, my bad. Let me start that again. Kickstarter plans layoffs after new projects on the site drop off by 35%. Now, this was just announced today in the U.S. Of course, oh, well, on the 20th. So we're always a day ahead of the rest of the world here in New Zealand. So welcome to tomorrow for everybody in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, Kickstarter announced in an inter internal memo, this is, this is from The Verge, uh, dot com. Uh, Kickstarter announced in an internal memo today, memo today that it's likely going to lay off employees. CEO Aziz Hassan writes that the crowdfunding company has already seen a significant drop in crowdfunding projects being listed on the site, which is, it, which is how Kickstarter makes its money from other people's projects. They get a fee. Uh, and if you're lucky, they get, they promote you. If they don't like you, they don't promote you. And so, because they don't promote you, people, you know, creatives have said, well, let's go somewhere else. And Indigo goes where they've gone to. Right. So, um, projects are down by 35%. The memo states with no clear sign of rebound. Now, conversations are now starting with Kickstarter's uh, union organizations, union organizers about potential layoffs. 60% of um, Kickstarter's 140 employees are unit members, uh, meaning that they're part of the union. And they, are, they successfully voted to unionize in February this year, which everybody on YouTube who, you know, and myself, not YouTube that much at that time, I saw a bit of a problem because, yeah, unions can... I've been in a union before in hospitality and tourism where you paid a fee and the guy comes in and decides, well, okay, they might help you or they might not. And there was a question of whether do I keep my couple bucks a week and spend it on comics or I give it to somebody else and get nothing out of it. And these guys decide, well, you know what, there's more power in a union, so let's unionize. Right? So, like I said, 60% decided, the other 40% didn't. They stayed away and they thought, you know what, I can negotiate myself for higher pay or whatever but i will negotiate with my you know with my bosses about this so uh, so it was the first technology company to do so to unionize nobody else was doing it so they wanted to be the first in this right uh hassan writes the company brought in 1.1.27 million in after tax profit last year and that money has already been invested reinvested back into the business is now looking for more significant cost cutting including reducing senior leaders' salaries, including his own, not automatically um, back hiring open roles and cutting the budget wherever we can still, uh, still, um, where we can still. Still, layoffs are being a likely element. And this is the case, right? So if you're not making money, well, you're not going to be able to pay your wage, work as their wage. And so there's going to be... A it's inevitable that there will be layoffs. So at the end of the day, what's the lesson here? Don't treat your people who come to pr promote their stuff uh, to use your site like a gatekeeper. Just don't don't be standing there going, you get through, you don't get through, you, don't, you get through, you don't get through. The whole idea of business is to make money. The reason you make money is to pay for your pay for yourself to survive and pay for your if you have staff for their wages so they can also survive now if you just if you treat it like oh you get to you get to come in my shop you don't you get to come in you don't you don't get to buy that it's not on offer well you're going to turn away your customers and you don't and that's what they've been doing for the last year or so they brought in someone who decided well you know what um from dc you know from a comic company right uh, to basically gatekeep against any, you know, people they don't like. 
uh, if you were doing something somewhere else, but your comic was fine, he, they looked at somewhere else and said, no, I don't want you on, on our platform. Of course, this is where what's left them here. When after, you're after take on profit of 1.727 million, it seems like a lot, but when you have like something like what, let's see, uh, 140 employees, right? Not sure if they're all full time or not. And you have your board of directors and so on. You got a CEO who's got to make sure it's running. You got a huge platform. You got to make that all going. People are going to run away when you start saying you can't get in. And you know, as as a you know as a shop owner before, and as being someone who's been in the um, who's been in stores, comic stores, and other stores, and in, as a salesperson, you never run away from your customer, and you never tell them to go somewhere else. You never make them go somewhere else by saying, "Well, we don't have it here, or you can't shop here." You go, "Well, let me see if I can help you. If I don't have it, let me see if I can find it." And so that's how you treat your customers, or people who come bring their project to you because, oh, let me see if I can, you know, we'll work with you to make it better or so on. But with crowdfunding, it's basically, here's my product. I'm going to go directly to, to my, um, to my customer, you know, to my, um, to my patrons, you know, to someone who wants to support me. Uh, you are the site that I want to put it on. The last thing you want to do is, oh, sorry, we don't like you go away. And so they decided to unionize because of a comic book called, uh, always punch Nazis and there's more to it. You can watch videos on it online on YouTube from other people who are more wise than me on the subject than I am. But this is what happens when you try to, um, when you try to gatekeep. Gatekeeping is a really bad thing. Um, and I think everybody should be welcome to anything. And if, and, um, but when they try to change things, which happened with, Kickstarter, they brought in someone who said, you know, we're going to play nice, nice, and we're not going to have bad people, even if they're not bad people. We just don't like their, their thinking. Well, people should be allowed to think the way they want and have a conversation with them, change their thinking or not, just leave them to it. And let the let the proof of the pudding speak for itself. If people don't like the, what they sell, you know, what they're crowdfunding for, then that's fine. If they like it and they get money, you get money, you get a percentage. Great. That's your service. Your service is a crowdfunder, right? Uh, is to provide a platform to be able to allow people access to their customer base. And they decided not to. And this is what happens in a lot of time with some of the shops in America have done this as well. Where comic stores, they say, well, we don't like you, so you're not allowed to put your comic in here. And it's kind of thing. Oh, we don't want to serve you because you like this other guy and you don't like this guy and so on. And that's just bad news for business. That's not how you do business. Um, I like to work with people. If they don't want to work with me, that's fine. They can go somewhere else, but I'm always open. You know, it's the same thing being in service and, you know, 15 years in customer service as a senior retail person over that 12 years, you get to a stage, you learn how to deal with people, you know, how to connect with people. And you know that not everybody's going to come back every time when you say, okay, um, you know, they might go somewhere else, but they might come back and you have to always be welcoming. And that's, that's the way it is. And um, if you're in retail, that's the way you got to think. And, and basically, Kickstarter is a retail outlet. It's a platform for retail. And um, the service they're providing is to the uh, creator. And um, the custom they're providing is to the creator's supporters. And all the creator has to do is make sure that his product arrives on time. He fulfills his um, project. Uh, like the, if he gets the, you know, once if it's fulfilled, he makes sure he sends it out. And the worst thing is to have people not send the product out or basically rip people off. And there's many people who've done that, right? Use the platform like Kickstarter to do that, um, especially if they've completed the projects and they haven't fulfilled their goal. Now, talking about that, um, in a week or two, I'm going to be kickstarting, uh, sorry, not kickstarting, on Indiegogo. I'm going to be crowdfunding my Science Spot magazine. I'm very excited about it. Been, you know, spent almost a year now working on it it's you know it's been complete for a while i tried to do it um, a couple of months ago I, this thing happened and i didn't do a good job at, at promoting on how to do it and so i've learned to listen i've been taught how to fix it how to do it right and hoping that we're launching on indiegogo see even i won't go to kickstarter 
so so you understand you know if if someone's going to be a gatekeeper somebody go look at my work and go, oh well hey uh this this article in here doesn't gel with us uh or this guy's artwork doesn't gel with us like well it's an entire magazine i'm not gonna I, i'm not gonna gatekeep even in the magazine i wrote hey i might not agree with some of the stuff in here but it's you know it's not my viewpoint it's a viewpoint of the people that have been interviewed or the artists who's writing this stuff i'm not going to be gatekeeping on that and it's the whole thing about that is to promote all different art, um, uh, art styles, comic books, and so on. And tomorrow I'll be having, uh, I think, Jason Long uh, to talk about his book, uh, The Cantankerous Can 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 Henry. Um, so I'm quite excited. So next thing. So, yeah, I mean, like, so you can't, you can't stop your customer from shopping at your store, right? And you can't stop people from selling through your platform. Because look at them, you know they're falling, and they're going to blame it on, on uh, they uh, they blame it on the beer bug. We know this was happened. I started the start of the year when this happened with the union. We knew this was coming, but they've been losing people for the last couple of years because of gatekeeping. All right, next up is Patreon lays off thirteen percent of its staff, so they're gone. Whereas they were play the other place was playing thirty five percent with Kickstarter. 13% of its staff at Patreon is gone. Now, this is from DN, DNUs, D-N-I-U-Z, uh, .com. Patreon has laid off 30 employees, or 13% of the company's staff, due to economic difficulties created by COVID. Right, by the pandemic, they reported on Tuesday, yesterday, excuse me. So, Patreon's did the same thing. They did the same thing as Kickstarter, right? They basically decided, well, you know, we don't want your type of people on here. Uh, they started harassing creators. They started um, basically uh, people started snitching on other creators. Creators started just snitching on creators. Uh, they started uh, watching them in their live streams, you know, uh, on their videos and like calling it out, uh, taking a joke out of context. And so on, or or telling them you can't do these sort of anime um, artwork, or if you do it this way, we don't want you here, and all this rubbish. And you could see it as soon as they started doing that, you could see the downfall. And it was just like polite, you know, you. It's kind of like you know the politeness police came in and and started um, rather than leaving the, uh, with the patron and letting them do you know connect back and forth. As long you know with artwork and so on and provider service whatever they were able to do that and then suddenly they say no 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 they went they i think they had some sort of a new investors come in and they made new rules and so on and you saw that happen if you've been following this um you saw you know you sort of knew in your head well, this is a bit strange to be doing that when you and now they turn around they're out of pocket Right, so it is unclear how long this economic uncertainty will last, and therefore, so they they they're using the whole, um, just like Kickstarter, they're using the pandemic as a excuse for this. All right, so it is unclear how long this economic uncertainty will last, and therefore, to prepare accordingly, we have made the difficult decision to part ways with 13% of Patreon's workforce. Patreon said in a statement to the Verge, the company. Also said that in March alone, we um, up on, onboarded 15,000 new creators to the platform, of which the average income was 60% higher than previous months. However, the company has seen a slightly higher rate of Patreon uh, subscriptions being deleted, with some patrons reporting the beer bag as the reason for deletion. Of course, that sounds like legit, but who knows right but of course like i said when they decided to do that people were running they were going somewhere else they're thinking well where, what else should i do how do i connect and there is a new site i've been told about it and um you know probably we'll you know we'll do some stuff there maybe maybe not see how it goes the uh, and this is what happens right so when when people go well i i need somewhere else to go and somebody else will go you know what Let's provide a let's pro provide a platform through that. Let's provide something like that for them, and so you get that fifty thousand, right? That uh, what is it? What was the number here? Uh, so they had fifty thousand um, new uh, new credits come on, 
and then however the slightly high rate higher rate was gone so you're talking about maybe 80 you know uh 80 000 left patreon is now is not the only crowdfunding right as we know just mentioned um kickstarter um but here's patreon statement about the layoffs over the past six weeks patreon has experienced a significant influx of new creators launching on the platform along with increased financial support from both their new and existing patrons in march alone we on on onboarded 50 uh, 50 000 new creators to the platform as i already just mentioned bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. This surge, along with the years of continuous growth, has put, yeah, how do you have continuous growth if you're chucking off your creators? And of course, remember, if you, that's a kind of like a sign to new creators to not go there because they don't know if that they're going to get chucked off as well. All right. Uh, so, um, so the surge, along with um, years of continuous growth, has put Patreon in a strong financial position to help creators successfully manage their creative businesses during this challenging time now along although hey if you just join us thank you for watching guys uh, appreciate that although the business is in a strong cash position we want to ensure that we can continue to support creators for many years to come how do you support creators if you're chucking them and, and telling them that you know we don't like you we don't want you on our platform that it, like you never tell people at the door we don't like you don't come into our store and I always use an analogy you know it's a business you never turn away customers and and creators are customers for patreon because they get a fee out of it right uh, do you see like you've got power companies right right now going hey uh, we can offer a better deal and another will come up will do this or even to internet providers right you can go online and compare who's got a better deal Right, so patrons coming down. Somebody else, like I said, has already started up another Patreon type thing, right? Independent creators are going there. So, you know, if you're gonna blockade against uh, creators who just want to make a couple bucks more or try to work them up through surviving as an artist off their work, right? Even fan fiction, maybe ero erotic uh, artwork uh, based on other creators' work. It doesn't matter or just sculptures, videos, movies, short films, the whole works, right? You were able to do that. But guess what? They say, no, oh, no, no, yeah. Sorry, you don't tick, You don't have the tick in the right box here for you, right? You're crossed out. Although the business is in a strong cash position, we want to ensure that we can continue to support creators for many years to come. It is unclear how long this economic uncertainty, see, th that whole thing, man, you know, uh, I just, everybody's going to use this excuse uh and i understand that i understand it it's going to be hard going forth but here's the thing these guys dug their own grave by doing what they did gatekeeping kickstarter patreon both gate kept right and so here's the deal so this decision was not made lightly um this is about talking about the firing of 30 percent of the workforce right which was about what 30 employees so they got unemployed 30 people unemployed because of bad management all right so uh here we go it was a combination of economic uncertainty performance reviews and a shift in strategy that prompted us to make this challenge change you know what you should have done patreon you said hey look we're sorry we made a mistake gatekeeping against you you know what we should have just done is like let the creators find their uh, patrons on our platform. We get a fee out of it. We don't even, all we do is we just manage it. And we, we're we not even creating the product, right? We're just hosting it, right? It's just like Indiegogo, just like uh, Kickstarter. We're just hosting it. But just like Kickstarter, Patreon decided, well, we're going to stand at the door and see who comes in, who doesn't come in. That's a bad way, right? Like I said, being a shopkeeper, you never stand there and go oh you're too young you're too old you might not like what was in here stay out someone comes in i want a mickey mouse comic do you have it no i don't have it but i'll, I'll look into getting you one what, what you know do you want a new one do you want an old one uh, what sort of are you interested in that's how that's how you should patreon should work and so that's how kickstarter should work all right here it is on the shelf have a look if this is what you want come and you know go and support it because if it's successful, it'll help pay the wages and keep the lights on. And sadly, 
these folks, they're not into business, that sort of business. They're into standing at the door at, like a security guard going, uh, sorry, you don't have the right clothes on. Uh -huh, um, yeah, you can't come in with that hat. Uh, your skirt's too high or too low. Uh, your heels are not high enough or low enough. Or, you know, you should be in flats. Uh, you shouldn't be in jeans. You should be in a skirt. Or, you know, you should be on tank top. Or uh, you should have a suit on, sir. Uh, you need a tie. So on. That's like a club. That's not a platform to do business. That's a nightclub. Right? You've got security guard there going, sorry, no. And this is the thing that happened over, they brought in a Kickstarter. As I mentioned, they brought in a person from DC Comics to be the security guard for Kickstarter. And how did they work out for Kickstarter? Everybody ran away to Indiegogo that were looked at and said, we don't want to have a, uh, want to deal with a security guard. Let's go find, um, you know, let's go find a, a club that's got no security guard or that, that's going to treat us well, that's going to actually let us in. We don't want to, you know, we're happy with paying five dollars, ten dollars at the at the door, but we don't want to be judged by the security guard. And this is what happened with Patreon. This is what happened with Kickstarter. That's my analogy on that, guys. But when it comes to anything like this, I always anything to do with comics, I always think of a brain as a shop owner, product, service, customer. That's how it works. Get your product, provide a good service to your customer. Don't stand there going, yeah, nah. I've had, I've had young people come in and go, well, look, I'm into uh, Deadpool. And I go, well, yeah, Deadpool's a bit violent. And the parent will come in and go, no, no, he's okay with it. He's been reading it for years. He's fine. And I go, okay, there you go. That's how you deal with things. You provide the information and then you do, you know, you get the pass on the right information and you leave it. Just like with the patrons go, this is what this book's about. Oh, this, this is what this creator does? Cool. You know that? Great. Now I'm going to step back. Thank you for watching, guys. And I'm going to step back as well. And thank you for watching. And um, if you like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on Facebook, thank you, guys. I love love your support you've shown for me this um, this uh, month. I've been working really hard on so many several things, trying to, you know, do a bit, be a bit, bit more busier while we're doing stuck at home. And, um, and to be honest, I find myself being very active uh, professionally as an artist and creator. And um, it's been fun. I hope I keep this energy level up once we come out of lockdown. And if you're watching around the world, this is our we're about going to our fourth week of lockdown. Hopefully we'll be coming out next week. And wherever you are, please stay safe. And hey, um, even when you, if you do come out of lockdown, I, the way I treat it is like I've already got it. Just keep the distance, keep the mask on, keep the sanitizer, keep the gloves on. Be safe, then you can be safe. Uh, be a safe, safe person for other people. Kakitiano, keep well. And like I said, if you're watching us on um, YouTube, please subscribe. Hit that button.